I have here in my hands the Rokinon 8mm lens for micro four thirds format cameras. And uh, it's a cine lens. It is really wide, super wide. It is a fisheye lens. And it's also pretty inexpensive. So the question is, could this lens be the one you need to round out your cine lens collection? Now, I'm not kidding about this being a wide angle lens. This is in full frame format. This would be equivalent to a 16 millimeter lens. And there's a couple of companies that make cine lenses for micro four thirds format that is wider and a 7.5 millimeter, including Rokinon. But we're talking the extreme end of the cine range here. Any wider than this, and you start to get into a circular fisheye format, which doesn't fill the frame. And that's really limited usefulness for cinematography. Now the Rokinon lens is a fisheye lens. It has a lot of barrel distortion. And so I wanted to give you a sense of what different wide angle lenses look like. So I shot the same scene using different lenses so you could compare. Now this first one is a moderately wide lens. It's a 14 millimeter in micro four thirds format. Now here's the SLR Magic eight millimeter lens, which I reviewed earlier. And uh, even though it's the same focal length as the Rokinon, it is a rectilinear lens so that uh, you don't have the barrel distortion. All the lines are straight. Now here's the Rokinon lens. And again, same focal length, wildly different appearance. The lines are curved, you have barrel distortion, and you're picking up a wider field of view even at the same focal length. And just to round things out, here's a GoPro shot using the uh, the super view mode, which is also a fisheye barrel distortion kind of image and uh, even wider than the Rokinon. This lens is pretty affordable at under $300, and yet it is fully kitted out with all the features you would expect on a cine lens. For example, the focus ring and the aperture ring are all geared so that either you or a dedicated focus puller can adjust focus using a follow focus rig. The aperture ring is declicked so that you can move smoothly between different apertures. All the markings are on the side rather than the top, which is what you would expect in a cine lens. That way a focus puller can see the settings. If you are a solo cinematographer or a photographer, however, it's a little harder to see around the side rather than having them on the top. And this lens is marked in T-stops rather than F-stops. That way you have consistency when you swap out lenses, you're gonna have the same exposure when you set the aperture to the same marking. And if you don't know what the difference between a T-stop and an F-stop is, just treat them the same way and everything will work out fine. And finally, the lens is manual focus as are most cine lenses, because quite frankly, you don't wanna rely on autofocus if you have a big budget motion picture with uh, thousands of dollars on the line. So manual focus is the way to go there. And you really shouldn't fear manual focus, but quite frankly, in a lens this wide, it has so much depth of field that if you're not that accurate with your focusing, it's probably still gonna be in focus anyway. Because of the barrel distortion with this lens, architecture and human-made objects, they don't look very normal. And also faces up close, they look really distorted. Now, that doesn't mean you can't use this lens with those types of subjects. You just have to be aware of what you're getting. Now, it's an inexpensive lens, so we have to ask ourselves, how does it perform? So I decided to do a sharpness test. I also compared it against the SLR Magic 8mm lens, and I compared it against the Panasonic 14mm pancake lens. Right away, I notice that this lens is pretty soft when you're shooting wide open at f3.8 and it's soft in the center and at the margins. Now the SLR Magic lens was a little bit soft when wide open at the edges but the center was sharp and the Panasonic pancake lens that one is sharp all over. Thankfully the Rokinon does get sharper as you stop down but that means for most practical purposes you're going to be shooting at f8, maybe f5.6, but then you're, you're losing a lot of light gathering capabilities, which means that shooting at night or interiors might become more difficult. So does that mean you can't shoot with this lens wide open? Well, I come from a history of using lo-fi equipment for creative effects, so I would never say, no, you can't shoot with a soft lens, but I think for most people, that's gonna be a problem and they're gonna need to stop down. You know, speaking of creative uses though, this lens makes some really cool sun stars when you stop down to F22. 
I also did a vignette test where I took some photos of a blank wall at different uh, apertures and uh, I'm pleasantly surprised to say that there wasn't a lot of vignetting at uh, any of the f-stops or I should say t-stops. Now this lens feels nice and solid. It's uh, not too heavy. I don't I don't think you'd vlog with it. It's a little heavy for that but all in all it's 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 pretty decent. There's one build quality issue though that I have that I don't know if it's the design in general or if it's this copy in particular but when you when you rotate the focus as you get near infinity it kind of drags a little bit or as if it's kind of rubbing up against something inside and when that happens the image actually shifts in the viewfinder too. Now you're not going to do a lot of precise focus pulls with a lens this wide probably, but still that's a little disconcerting. I think most cinematographers are going to use a wide angle lens like this pretty sparingly. So if you're not going to use it a lot, it might make sense not to spend a whole lot of money on a lens. And if that's the case, maybe you can overlook the little focus wobble and the softness when it's wide open. Now landscape photographers might find this lens useful and some of the, the quirks might not be an issue because the softness, well, you're probably gonna want a lot of depth of field anyway in a landscape photo. So you're probably gonna be shooting at F16 or F22. The softness wide open isn't an issue at that point. Also the focus wobble wouldn't be an issue because you're not doing a focus pull during your still shots. You're just dialing it in and taking a shot. The unique perspective of this lens might be useful to you as a landscape photographer. And again, it's affordable. Here's an example of uh, a shot I took in my backyard at night. And I think this was shot at F8. But what does an eight millimeter micro four thirds lens look like when it doesn't have barrel distortion? It's amazing how different two lenses can look even at the same focal length. For comparison, you should check out the review I did recently of that SLR Magic eight millimeter lens. It's the same focal length, but in almost every other aspect, it's completely different. So click here and check it out. Please.